Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves and all those kind of things. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm in Luminar AI again and trying to make a number of shorter videos showing some basic workflow and some ideas for popping your images and just kind of giving them a little bit of life. So I'm going to hop into it. Here's an image. I've pre-cropped this. It was shot with my Olympus camera probably five or six years ago. And um, the Olympus cameras shoot in a four to three aspect ratio. What that means is I had a lot of foreground, so I cropped it 16 by nine so that I could get less foreground and really focus in on that log laying on the beach. So after I've done that, I wanted to pop into light and kind of get things going. So the first thing I did is kind of cool it off. Um, and I went to around the 4,600 range and around 20 or so here on tent. Something I tend to do it's a very subtle adjustment, but I guess for lack of a better word, it's a bit of a habit for me at this point of temperature left and tint right when I'm dealing with kind of sunsetty type conditions. And this was a sunset. It wasn't particularly stunning, but it was kind of nice. And as you will see in this video, we're going to bring back some of that color so that uh, the image can really uh, kind of stand on its own a little bit. So let me get the highlights pulled down and the contrast. Okay, I like where we are. I'm now going to go to uh, Accent AI and Sky Enhancer. I'm going to do about 30 or so here uh, and I'm actually going to use Sky Enhancer as well. What that does, that basically acts a little bit like a polarizing filter so it gives a little bit more darkness to some of the blues in the sky. So if I show you the before and the after, I've in many ways I've brightened the foreground and darkened the sky a little bit and if it's not obvious, I mean the subject of the photo is that log and so I want to kind of accentuate that by doing some things to make it kind of stand out and make the rest of the background I don't want to say fade away, but I'm going to soften that up. And in fact, I'm going to start with that right now with structure. And I'm going to go negative, a, uh, negative AI structure. And I'm going to go like a negative 50 or so. Let me check my notes. Yeah. And what I want to do is get in here and I want to just erase that negative structure. I want to erase that from this log. I'm going to increase my, bra uh, my brush with the right bracket key. And all I'm going to do is m remove that negative structure from around this log because I want to have good visibility into the log, but the rest of the photo I'm kind of softening up. So that's basically what I've done here. Everything else remains kind of soft, and just that little section of the foreground remains pretty uh, pretty clear. So that's what the negative structure did for me. Now I'm going to pop over to color and give that vibrance a boost of about 33, 34. But I do want to pull down the blue saturation a little bit, so I'm going to go about negative 20 there, just because I don't want to pop too much of the blues. Um, I'm just trying to get some of the other colors to stand up a little bit. There it is before, and there it is after. Pretty subtle difference, but now we're going to get into some of the color stuff. And the very next thing is, of course, the golden hour filter. And I'm going about 48 here. That's going to give me a nice bump of color and warmth in the photo, which we're going to accentuate here in a moment. But um, I think it starts to kind of bring that sunset to life. And that's one of the, honestly, it's probably one of my favorite tools in Luminar is golden hour. But there it is before. You can see it's decidedly blue overall. And now um, it's really warming up those tones that are warm already, which is that stretch of uh, hill back here where it's kind of orange. And of course, the sand is starting to get a little bit more warm. So one more time, there it is before and there it is after golden hour. OK, now we're going to get on the creative tab and I'm going to go straight to split toning and I'm just working on the highlights. I'm going to leave the hue all the way to the left, which is in the reds. And I'm going to drag the saturation to about 20, 21, something like that. And you can see how that gives a little bit of warmth kick to those brighter parts. I'm working in the highlights and I'm adding basically some redness to them. So there it is before and after. It's subtle, but it gives a little bit more bump to that sunset color, which I like quite a bit. And now we're going to mystical. And here I'm going to uh, like mid 40s, uh, something about like that. And as you can see, it creates a little bit of a contrast. Uh, it creates a little bit of what I call moodiness. Um, the darker areas got a little bit darker. The brighter areas got a little bit brighter. That's the contrast I'm talking about. But it creates a little bit of glow in the highlights too, and I like that quite a bit. So there it is before, and there it is after. It mystical, I think, is a is a good description for it. Uh, I am going to bump up the saturation a little bit, so like maybe 15, and the warmth I'm going to take to about 25 or 30. And again, I'm bringing up some of that warmth because of its uh, it being a sunset photo, and that's what I'm trying to accentuate here. So there it is before mystical, and after mystical. Okay, my next move is over to the pro tab and I'm going to go into color harmony and all I want to do is bring up the warmth on brilliance and warmth a little bit. Just again, trying to pop 
that sunset feeling without overdoing it. And I think Branson Warmth does a great job of that. So does Split Color Warmth. I'm going at about 29 there. So something about like that, you can see that's really starting to bring that warm tone to the, the well, not just the foreground. I was going to say the foreground, but I really mean the forefront of the photo. You're starting to feel the warmth, I think. So if I turn that off, there it is before the color harmony, which is brilliance and warmth, warmth of uh, looks like 11, and split color warmth of about 27. But there it is before, and there it is after. I think that's definitely giving it a lot more of that sunset feel. And in my opinion, it's not really over the top. I think it's looking nice. And you know what? One thing I forgot, I'm gonna go back to Mystical. Here's a fun little thing. I like how Mystical has applied to most of the photo, but it's it's a little bit too dark. I kind of forgot to do this when I was on the Mystical tool. So there's before and there's after. It's a little too contrasty and dark in the foreground. So this is where I come in with a gradient mask. And all I wanna do is just drag that gradient like that. And so all I'm trying to do is create that Mystical or apply that Mystical more heavily to that upper left section and leave it out of that bottom corner, which includes that log. So I meant to do that when I was on Mystical, kind of forgot, got distracted by all the colors and the fun, but if I turn off Mystical now, you can see it's applying, uh, there it is before, so nothing uh, anywhere, and now after, mostly just applying basically across that diagonal. I'm just trying to leave that bottom section alone. And the main reason is because to me, the focal point of the photo is really that log. It kind of draws your eye in and then you kind of go up, or at least I do. So I'm kind of looking at that and it's a little bit dark. So the last thing I'm gonna do is go over here to the vignette filter. And I don't wanna apply a vignette, but I do wanna apply some inner brightness to the log. So you'll notice inner light, uh, inner light, not inner brightness, but inner light is turned off and that's because the vignette filter is not in use. But like I said, I don't want a, a vignette. I don't want to do something like that. So what you can do is you can just take the amount to just one or negative one, uh, just basically to turn it on. So I'm going to do negative one. And now I'm going to choose subject. My subject is this log here. And I'm going to hit inner light. And that's where the inner light is going to focus. So that's going to kind of brighten up that foreground area without really applying a vignette across the photo. So that's a fun little trick or tip that you can use with the vignette filter to get the benefit of inner light without applying a vignette because at negative one, you can't see it. That's a quick and easy way to do that. And let me show you the photo. If you remember, it was kind of drab looking and uh, you know not that colorful, but it was a sunset. And all I wanted to do is bring back some of that light and color and kind of fun, some of that mood in the photo. So there it is before and there it is after. And if I do this sliding window thing here, you can see what we've done, you know, softened up a lot of the detail except in that log um, and bumped the colors and the light pretty much uh, everywhere, kind of rearrange the light a little bit. And I think really have a nice emphasis on that log and of course made it uh, pop in terms of being a sunset without really being over the top. Despite using multiple tools, we use temperature, we use golden hour, we use a couple of things in color harmony and we use split toning, but it's quick, it's easy, it's simple. And of course it's fun um, in Luminar AI. So that's my final result. One more time, there's before, there's after. There's a quick uh, workflow for you. Hope that helps and gives you some ideas for your own photos and can't wait for you to get your hands on Luminar AI. I know it's coming soon. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you really soon. Take care of yourselves out there and adios.